I am Ted Nelson, recording on the 29th of June, 2015. This is an anniversary video. It's a big anniversary for me. I'm a controversial figure, which means that a lot of people dislike me. Like Al Gore, I have become a convenient clown meme to the underinformed. I hope my work will someday be seen to have depth and integrity, ideally in my lifetime. But meanwhile and always, I must deal with a singular blot on my escutcheon, the scurrilous attack by Wired magazine. This month is the 20th anniversary of that attack. The article pretended to be a history of my project Xanadu, but its main intention was to destroy my reputation, my career, and indeed my life, and it did a very good job. Because the article implied that I never finished anything, I could no longer find work in the United States and skirted bankruptcy for some years. Never finish anything. From the article, the reader would hardly suspect that I've earned three university degrees, that I've gotten three patents, that I've written and published nine books, that I've written and published something like a hundred articles and columns, ten articles peer-reviewed, thank you very much, which is much harder, that I've taught and graded over 750 students, and that I've published some 500 minutes of video on my YouTube channel. The author says I have a, quote, tiny attention span. How could I have done such things with a tiny attention span? The article is a hymn of hate. It attacks every aspect of my life, even my childhood religious experience on which my work and ideas are based. The article presents me as a contemptible, incoherent sicko whose life has been totally ludicrous and worthless, even though the author backhandedly admits that I inspired the personal computing revolution and the World Wide Web. How would you feel if someone who hated you described your life with hatred and contempt? Well, that's how I feel. Everything is stated in the nastiest way possible. Almost every sentence contains a slur or an insult which will by attrition affect even a discerning reader, let alone the more impressionable readers of Wired. He calls my search for new knowledge a, quote, omnivorous fascination with trivia. He calls my childhood religious experience of interconnection in the universe a, quote, vision of water disturbed. He calls my absent-mindedness aphasia, brain damage. But I am nowhere near as absent-minded as the great Norbert Wiener, and nobody ever accused Norbert Wiener of being brain damaged. He says that I offended my professors in college. I never did. He gets the titles of my works in progress wrong. He calls my big old car battered, but it had no dents, just faded paint. The events most colorfully discussed are the end game of the Autodesk fiasco, the only period when I was not in charge of the Xanadu project, a fact which the jackal pointedly omits. He pretends to be a surprised observer, but actually sets himself up as judge, jury, and executioner. Not a surprised observer at all, but rather, I believe, a hired killer. Only at the end does the author reveal the fascist predilections and love of authority that drive his hatred of me, my colleagues, and our work. The author is a vicious twerp whom I prefer to call Gory Jackal, but he could not have publicly brandished his moral twerpitude without the enthusiastic connivance of those who ran the magazine people whom I had imagined were my friends. One such fake friend was the editor of Wired. I considered him both a friend and a dimwit, but an amiable dimwit he would not have given the execution order. So the real perpetrators had to be the publishers, Louis Rosetto and his Mal Jane Metcalf. I actually thought they were my best friends, and I applauded their new magazine and wore the cap and button to advertise it. I had stayed with them in Amsterdam. I took them kayaking on Richardson Bay, Marlene and I had them to dinner only a few months before they betrayed us both, turning around and stabbing me in the back. Stab in the back? Say, rather, both barrels below the belt. With friends like those, as the saying goes, who needs enemies? My real friends say, forget the article, with the old saw that no publicity is bad publicity. But if you Google me, that foul article bobs to the top like a turd in a punch bowl, still spreading its poison. His accusations are so numerous, so woven, and so convincing to the casual reader that this matter has got to be settled in my lifetime. 
So I've descended once more into the jackal's sewer of hatred to expose the distortions and omissions, cavernous omissions, or rather, I believe, concealments. Omissions, of course, are countless. That's philosophically obvious. But I will enumerate the biggies that really do count. So the video you are now watching is the trailer for a full-length rebuttal of the jackal's attack. That long video is intended for those few who are really interested in the subject and the truth, or in learning some of the tricks of dirty journalism or its legal implications. I wrote a rather good rebuttal when the article came out, but the bastards at Wired wouldn't print it. I put two rebuttals on the net, but they don't come up on Google. Perhaps this trailer and the full video will reach a larger audience. In the full-length video, I will examine the possible extent and craftsmanship of Gory Jackal's viciousness and, I believe, dishonesty. The Jackal's article is a textbook case of dirty journalism, certainly the nastiest article ever written in the computer field, and the full video should be seen by every law student for obvious reasons, as well as anyone interested in computer history and alternatives to today's computer world. Now, I have already recorded this full-length video. It's actually feature-length. And it's already uploaded to YouTube, but I haven't released it to the public. It's kind of harsh. I'm considering recording a cheerier, more debonair version. Since this trailer now marks my anniversary, marks the anniversary and notes my intent, there is no hurry about the longer version, but if I die, the existing version will become public. The Jackal might say that my proposed cheerier version is one of my, quote, unfinished projects. No. It is simply about whether in my magnanimity I decide to be nicer to the guy than he was to me. But he certainly does not deserve it, nor do Rosetto or Metcalf. Thank you.